Elaine, you know, I love many things. Yes. And I talk about this on the podcast. I love long flumes. I love Daniel Radcliffe. But Mm -hmm. another one I think we need to add to the list is that I, Felicia, love theme restaurants. Oh, this does not shock me. I see it. But here's the fascinating thing. I don't like restaurants. Oh, okay. That must be very conflicting in your life. I will only go to a restaurant if there is a strong thematic element. That's what gets me out the door. As a kid minorly terrified of restaurants but somehow if you asked younger me her idea of heaven there's like a 30 percent chance she would have said the rainforest cafe Mm, i've always wanted to go it's got animatronics love it's got fake plants in 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 strange places love amazing it's got it's just there's something so beautiful about it i was I, i when i was a kid we went to disney a few times and i would go Go to the animal kingdom and at at grab a lunch and a milkshake. Ooh, uh, I would just get a milkshake. I don't even think I'd get a meal. I think I would literally just get a milkshake. In the Rainforest Cafe, which was crazy because they literally have like a thunder soundtrack, and I was terrified of thunderstorms. So I don't know what the fuck I was doing. They must have just really won you over, you know? Like it, it felt so yeah. real and magical that like the scary things are still fun. You know, yeah. my question is, what level of theme like can you do you enjoy an Olive Garden? That's actually my favorite restaurant. That's so, fucking yes. amazing. Well, I don't know if Olive Garden is actually my favorite restaurant. They just make my favorite soup and I don't eat anything else on their menu. Nice. They may, I, I got their chicken and gnocchi soup once and I was like feast for the gods and I never <laughs> ordered anything ever again. This is mine forever. Also, I feel like I'm going to get roasted for suggesting that Olive Garden is a themed restaurant. But it like is an, lightly themed. It's more than an Applebee's. Exactly. It's like very cheesy faux Italian, which is why I'm throwing it out there, you know. Actually, an Applebee's is themed. Like, I don't I don't want to go to like an upscale restaurant if it's not themed. Exa- if the theme yes. is concrete and black geometric squares, get me out of yeah get there. the fuck but if you're gonna if you're spending a lot of money there better be an experience included with it well felicia i am excited to tell you that there is a themed restaurant that you should add to your list i would love for us to go oh my goodness i didn't even know this was the episode topic that's crazy how on the how on trend i was so kooky um because today we're gonna talk about universal's toothsome chocolate emporium which i'll be sharing more details about here in just a few but giggity goo goo giddy bitch it's gonna be a good old time uh and as we are looking at the menu at toothsome that's so interesting i see there's a special for today we didn't we also didn't introduce ourselves so it's a table for two and it's me felicia and elaine is the other person at the table it's me and we're serving you a podcast about uh, all the shit in the Wonka verse for two people who didn't really think they cared about Wonka, and then we learned the prequels the in the making. Uh, <laughs> we lift off the cloche, all the smoke comes out, <laughs> and then we like top on the ganache, and it like starts melting. And um, we're two people who didn't really care about Wonka until we learned there was a prequel in the making starring Timothy Chalamet, and we're like, that's so weird. And now we've entered into a spiral, um, and it's just chaos. Oh man, this is such a lovely restaurant we're sitting in. Let's check out the uh, the specials. Anything you like, Felicia? Um, no. Let's go to a drive through then. <laughs> beep beep boop boop. Uh, I would like one order of the Wonka Watch combo, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello. What was that? Hi. I want to order a Wonka Watch. I'm not really sure what it is, but so that's one Wonka Watch. Yeah, it says it's like a two-minute right, well, segment. to the first window. Okay, I have a coupon. Hi, ma'am. You <laughs> wanted the Wonka Watch? Yeah, can you please give me some Wonka Watch? Give me some Wonka Here's news. Here's the Wonka Watch news. Because you used a coupon, it's a discount segment today. And by that, I mean it's a little shit. 
Um, Wonka <laughs> Watch is our segment when we talk about the latest and greatest in Wonka news. And guys, so little is happening that I legitimately, in my Wonka digest that I get delivered to my email every single day, was delivered an article from 2016 Ooh. announcing Christian Borel playing Wonka on Broadway. A bit of a blast from the past. Wow, I was like, how, why are you what? sending this to me now? It is 2022. Yeah, what? I was oh like gosh. 13. Stop. Time time traveler. Okay. I was having an in-depth conversation at Myrtle Beach at 3.30 a.m. with my friend about this, how time travel is all happening at the same time. And if it was actually happening, we wouldn't know about it because probably someone stopped it at some point. But anyway, maybe you have in a moment where like past you needed to send the message forward. But that's really fucked up and sad. Yeah, but there is there is actually something pretty cool, an opportunity Ooh, for okay. some Wonka scholars, perhaps, to Ooh. get in on some Wonka action. So, uh, posted by BrooklynVegan.com, Alamo oh. Draft House is hosting Willy Wonka parties with Veruca Salt and Mike TV actors in 11 cities. So, yes, you can meet Paris Themen and Julie Don Cole. What, uh, what goes on at these parties? This is all I know. Alamo Draft House is taking inter- enduring 1971 family film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory on a tour of 11 of its theaters in September, featuring post-screening Q&As with actors who played the kids Veruca Salt and Mike TV. They're calling it the Ultimate Willy Wonka Party, and screenings will be happening in Houston, Corpus Christi, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Ashburn, Virginia, Woodbridge, Virginia, Charlottesville, Virginia, D.C., Brooklyn, and Yonkers in September. Yonkers. Yeah. Where's Yonkers? It's in New York. That's amazing. That's Yonkers to hear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That was. A- I can't believe we got your reaction to the, the town of Yonkers live on this podcast. <laughs> How often does that get to happen in a person's life? You know, not often. I mean, I mean, once. You got, you didn't get to be there for my first steps, but you got to be there for the day I learned Yonkers was a place. I mean, it's like a city right outside of New York. It's like I went to Yonkers of- and all I got was this lousy t shirt. Is something I need now. I got to go see Wonkers and Yonkers. Um, I- <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, and then Alamo <laughs> Draft House also said that you'll get to take some movie props home, maybe. What? They said the f- they what? Alamo also says there will be some movie party props to take home. What the fuck? Do- what? I'm so baffled by this. So that's all I know. Like, that's literally all I know. Interesting. We'll have to... I, I did have a moment that. where I read Charlottesville as Charlotte, and I was like, Jesus Christ, Elaine. Oh, Whoa, that's dangerously close. Oh, okay. Well, whew. which honestly, a little. I'm a little okay with that, but you know if it's like close enough, I'll fire up my Kia, burn rubber it does, <laughs> on the road. I, if I was still in college, I would have been like 30 minutes away from one of those. Jesus. Would have been crazy. I would have been like, hey, art professor, remember when you said I could stay at your apartment in Charlottesville if I needed to? Well, the time has come. I need to see. <laughs> That's the Wonka watch. It's nice. it's light. It's a light Wonka watch, a light meal. It's our diet option. Oh, well, that's good. No worries, because I'm about to fucking fill you up with knowledge. So this is an Elaine led episode. Get excited. Dad's taking care of the family tonight. And Mom's taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> so, Felicia. Dad got off his lazy boy. He's getting- yeah. <laughs> I still got my PBR in hands and I got the ESPN on in the background. But sure, kid, I'll take a moment to tell you a story. And that story today is about a magical themed restaurant that resides in Universal Parks in Orlando, Florida. Are you ready to go on this journey with me, Felicia? Yeah! Here we go, kids. So, let's start with the number one question. Why the fuck do we care? And the answer is because, guys, this is a chocolate factory, essentially. And we'll get more into that, but, like, you look at this thing, it is a chocolate factory. And I first found this when I was looking up the candy theme park I wanted to cover for our candy theme parks episode. And I realized as I was going on, I was like, this should probably be its own episode because there's just so much more Wonka things we can relate it to. And I felt like it was going to be really intense. And so I put on my little podcaster uh, chocolatier hat, um, which melts in the sun. Um, so I'm 
covered in hot sugar. Anyway, um, this is what happens when I lead an episode. So um, (laughs) anyway, I wanted to give a quick shout out to listener Kira, who emailed us about this today or yesterday, like basically the day we're going to record this episode. They emailed us about this. Which it is was weird insane. timing. It was That's great. insane. Like Wonka psychic, like synergy happening right there. When you live in the Wonka well long enough, it becomes a Wonka hive mind of sorts. We've done it. This is the first true like example we have. This it's, is I evidence. Mean, it's a cult. Exhibit A. It's a cult. Kira, you're now part of the cult. <laughs> <laughs> oh Thank no! Thank you for joining the Wonka Witch Coven. <laughs> 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 Bring your sugar sacrifice each Wednesday and we'll perform our little witch wonka craft for the next episode. Um, anyway, what Kira said to us is I live near Universal Orlando theme parks in the City Walk area. There is a restaurant called the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium in Savory Kitchen. I went to eat there recently and oh my, it gave me big Wonka vibes from steampunk theme as well as all the merchandise to, of course, the amazing candy and chocolate they have. They even have a bar with a chocolate martini as well as some more chocolate drinks. So let's fucking get the appetizer and eat too much and then still eat the whole meal and feel stuffed so i'm gonna fill up on the glass of water they put in front of me because i can't stop drinking it nice and then you're gonna need to pee but get too nervous to figure out where the bathrooms are and then you have to have someone else ask the waiter where they are and then you still feel like you're gonna get lost yeah um which would definitely happen in this place because it's fucking huge so (laughs) Um, let's start with a little bit of history. So Universal City Walk is a free area. It's kind of part of the Universal Parks, but you don't have to have a ticket to go there. You just have to it's, pay for it's parking. It's like a downtown Disney kind of situation. Yeah. So it just has some shops and restaurants, um, probably ridiculously expensive across the board. But, you know, it's like a fun. it's like if Tanger Outlets tried. <laughs> um <laughs> So this actually replaced MBA City, which was a basketball themed restaurant that ran from 1999 to 2015, which, yeah, that's fucking wild. MBA City. I'm going to be honest. If Wonka Watch, if we got like a massively sued by Warner Bros somehow, and Uh they were like, you can't talk about Wonka anymore. You're legally not allowed to. I think we could do a podcast just about theme restaurants. I would do it. I would do it. And we would never visit them. <laughs> That's the key. That's the key. Well, and I would love to That's go to them. That's the selling point. That's the yeah, so why no. is that the I would love to go. Please. I want to no, try every go. specialty drink at every restaurant. Okay. Elaine yeah. gets drunk while Felicia giggles at me. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so NBA City, RIP. That's a whole other rabbit hole you can go down. I watched some like horrifying early aughts commercial that gave me like pre VHS ads uh, vibes from like your Lion King VHS. (laughs) Was Elaine sober when she agreed to do Wonka Watch? Have you been living out these eight months based on a drunk decision? (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) The good news, the good news is I was just like a little tipsy, (laughs) but like. I guess I technically wasn't sober when I said yes to this. Um, Wonka Watch it, was not formed on sober consent. Y- you know what? It worked out, though. So yeah. So we'll take it. It's just been too awkward for me to say no. Like, I've wanted to for months <laughs> now, but I'm, like, in too deep. I'm like, have I brought it up now? Like, it'd just be too awkward. And, like, I'll just, like, ride this out for another fucking year um <laughs> anyway back to the thing back to the thing anyway anyway so rip mba city uh ended in 2015 and then we have the toothsome chocolate emporium open in 2016 so i'm gonna quote uh an article here getting to know universal toothsome chocolate emporium and savory feast kitchen by joseph matt that really summed up what this uh, themed restaurant is so take one part cheesecake factory menu one part steampunk convention, one part chocolate, and then it has strike through on factory, chocolate emporium. Mix in a blender and serve it all in a souvenir glass with over the top garnish, and you have the chocolate emporium. So hot damn. Hot fucking damn. And I like the strike through on factory because this is, again, like it's so Willy Wonka, it almost hurts, and you're wondering, like, should they get sued or not? They shouldn't, but like, it could be. Um, everything I'm going to tell you, I pulled from different YouTube walkthroughs as well. So I referenced the article I just mentioned. I just want to quickly shout out the YouTubers Wonderland Explorers, 
allears.net and Ordinary Adventures uh, for letting me peep on this. Beep, boop, boop, boop. So um, like any good themed restaurant, there's lore. Ooh! Oh, I love a bit of lore. Here is the history of the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium. From the Alps to the Empire of the Aztecs, from Mongolia to Madagascar, Professor Dr. Penelope Thibault Tinker Toothsum learned new and fascinating methods of infusing chocolate into the most extraordinary recipes, making friends and receiving honors everywhere she went. Upon returning home to London, Penelope determined that she would share her love and knowledge of chocolate with the world. She set about building the Toothsum Chocolate Emporium and Savory Feast Kitchen, an enchanting 19th century themed steampunk-inspired dining establishment with a facade of towering smokestacks and an interior adorned with intriguing gadgets and gizmos. I think that is the most adjectives I've heard in a paragraph. It was so much. And the name of the... I'm just going to call this Toothsome from here on out because yeah. Toothsome Chocolate Emporium and Savory Feast Chicken, that seems redundant <laughs> and, feast like, chicken. insane. It's... Yeah. But, feast like... Chi- Elaine, you said Feast Chicken. <laughs> Which is Chick-fil-A actually, is that's spot. actually a mix up I had as a kid. Like that was my thing is I would always say, let's go to the chicken when I wanted oh, to no. eat food. I'm going to get some milk out of the chicken. I literally thought you were g- about to get up and leave. Oh, I'm going to get some milk out of the chicken. I'll be right back. After I just shoved two chimichangas down this guzzle over here. I'm, I'm feel, I'm, when I say I'm full, ooh, danger could strike at any moment. So just kind of continuing, Penelope Toothsum and her robot companion, Jacques, <gasps> created Toothsome as the world's best chocolate emporium as an homage to her fellow adventurer parents, Penel um oh parents period. Which I it's really <laughs> it was really hard to try to find more details about the lore. Um, like my best was snippets from article and the YouTube videos. So I don't know if it changes or if they just kind of like keep it a little secret there's not necessarily a set act that you always see but usually during the dinner portion penelope and jacques the robot will wander around so you do have actors yes you have so it's like real lore oh it's real lore it's not like fake marketing bullshit lore they've bought into the lore they've bought into the lore oh my god that reminds me of like okay this is a big this is a big thing for me i have always wanted to eat at disney they have a restaurant where every once in a while and it's not a guarantee and that's the fucked up part like you you have to try your luck every once in a while they'll bring out a little like cloche with some food underneath it and they open up and it is a tiny animatronic of remy the rat and i want to see oh it so God. bad but it, there's no guarantee mm. i can't so i can't go and then not see remy then I've just had a shit croissant. Not that the croissant's bad. I just don't really like well, now food it, that much in it general. It will be shit, though. You know? Yeah. Like, it'll be shit because they're like, fuck this. Like, I came here for a rat and all I got was a stupid w- croissant. Another t-shirt you can get at the Yonkers gift shop. <laughs> That's insane. What I also learned is that apparently, so when they say the Cheesecake Factory menu, I've never been there, but I've heard it's basically a novel, right? So yeah. they've actually included some of the backstory within the menu oh so I love that. here is a snippet i haven't actually fully read this and i honest to god don't know how much sense this will make because i don't know where this is pulled or if it's in I feel like like chronological this is, order this is bordering on zine rather than menu at this point right <laughs> yeah no seriously like and uh, um every youtuber uh basically said that the menu was overwhelming like there are so many options and then obviously you have this stuff it looks cool design wise but it's a lot especially if you're like me and you have trouble deciding what you want um and you end up ordering the same thing every time anyway but like there's so many you know you're going to a themed restaurant you want to get the unique thing it's probably going to take everyone like a fucking hour to decide what they want so here's some details about the backstory from the menu jacques landed the dirigible and i don't know what that is um dirigible the the, the, the dirigible i know dirigible Am I saying I, that wrong? I know that what sounds it is, like a but boat? I can't picture it. Uh, it's an airship. Oh, you know. You know. It's a, a dirigible. A dirigible. It looks like a blimp. It, it's a blimp. So yeah. he landed. Okay, so Jacques, again, a robot, landed the blimp in front of a small cottage home in London, England. Professor Dr. Penelope Thibault Tinker Toothsum. We need to just pause. I'm going to pause. The fuck is a professor doctor? This is, I'm going to be honest, it's very much giving private detective investigator Milan home to whole house. Oh my God. Wait, 
fan fiction. That's his wife. Yeah. Done. Love it. I'll write it on the side. Change the names. Uh, move over Fifty Shades Grey. Fifty Shades of Chocolate. Um, Professor Dr. Penelope Tobol Tinker Toothsome was overjoyed to share her experiences and experiments with her family. Again, we learned I don't we don't know anything about her fucking family, but apparently they were explorers. She quickly stepped from the cockpit of the airship and dashed up the cobble pathway. She threw open the front door, soaking in her childhood home, except it was empty. All that remained was the old Victoria in the old Vic- Victrola. The, oh my God. All that remained was the old Victrola in the corner of the living room. Penelope stepped into her mother's kitchen, recalling the first time she ever tasted chocolate. There was a song in her head. She couldn't recall the name of it, but it was French and jazzy. There on the kitchen floor was a note from her parents. Dearest Penelope, we have set out to join you and your adventures. Surely the world isn't so big that we can't find you. We shall look for you wherever chocolate can be found. Love, Thomas, and Violet Toothsome. Yes, her parents signed it as their first names. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What? Oh, it keeps going. Uh, This is a novel. This is like this is like that book you would open a cereal box and they'd give you like it's a book and it's like eight pages but like uh-huh. weirdly like 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 it's both too short to be anything and too long to be short you know yeah what I like mean? I'm gonna be talking for twenty minutes straight before we actually get to the fucking restaurant yeah that's how this feels um, yeah. <laughs> uh, which also I, not do, you, do you think lore, anyone has like, ever tried to order the violet twosome God I hope so that sounds like a Jello. Could I have the dirigible, please? The dirigible, sir. Please. That's part of the story of the ma- the dirigible. The fact that I learned two new words so far already is. Do you know what the Victrola is? Is that like the old timey like record player thing with the big horn? Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah! They're she like, reads Agatha Christie. What up? <laughs> there's like a like. I feel like it's like it's going into like purple prose, which there shouldn't be purple prose on a menu. What's purple prose? That's like overly descriptive flowery text. Ah, it's like okay. if if the yes. catcher in the rye got turned into opposite day. Gotcha. Yeah. Do you know what so, I mean? Scarlet letter. Yes. Gotcha. I'm sure. Okay. Your menu shouldn't sound like it's been written by Ann Carson. It doesn't sound like mm. it's been written by Ann Carson. That's a bad. Literary people are going to eat me up for that. Oh my gosh! Roast Felicia at WonkaRapture at Gmail dot com. Here we go. <laughs> Your novel shouldn't sound like it was written by Jeanette Winterson. There we go. Oh, I'm good. Sh- oh, 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 okay. Oh, I'm oh, getting fired oh, up. No. Oh, no. <laughs> All the literary critics that listen to this podcast. <laughs> it's more accurate than Ann Carson. So, if we haven't had anyone email us for roasting the original book, I think we're yeah, in the clear. we're we're fine. We're fine. Um, people know. So anyway, we okay. We have the letter, dear Spinelby. We had set out to join you on your adventures, except she just came home. So that seems like a bad thing. But whatever. Moving on. Penelope knew immediately what she had to do. She would take everything she knew about chocolate and develop a fully industrialized, state of the art chocolate emporium. I don't know how these two things relate, but sure. <laughs> Until the day she was reunited with her family, who are out looking for her, and she's home. <laughs> What the fuck? Did anyone copy edit this? Whatever. Until the day she was reunited with her family, she would share her love and knowledge of chocolate with the world. With the old Victrola in her arms, Penelope made her way back to the dirigible. I hate that word. Blimp. Uh, Jacques quickly lifted them into the air. They were off to chase their destiny and find the perfect location for the world's foremost chocolate emporium. There would still be discoveries. This is all on the menu? Uh huh. Throughout, <laughs> um, there would still be discoveries to be made, but she was determined to make them all. So you know that sounds Willy Wonka esque. He goes traveling, comes across a cocoa bean, meets the Oompa Loompas, and then creates a giant yeah. chocolate factory to discover all things chocolate. Like you know, it's there. Mm-hmm. I like this story. I would. I think this could be a cute book. I unfortunately, uh, menus can't make the New York Times uh, bestsellers list. Yeah, I don't think it would. No, no. So uh, let me share. I'm going to have a lot to show you in the drop zone today. Oh, I'm so, very excited. Um, as you should be. So first off, I'm this, this fucking emporium is huge. It's overwhelming. It is a factory. The, uh-huh. I, I couldn't, I don't know how tall it is, but it's like skyscraper halfway 
Oh, what the tall. fuck? Is that not insane? So um, you have three different parts of the restaurant. So you have the Candy Smith, which is kind of like more of a store where you can buy the candy. You have the main restaurant. Why and is then- this scary? Like, why does this freak me it's out? It's imposing. Yeah. And like the steam pucket is very, um, uh, it's copper, gray metal, lots of cool gears. Like it looks fun, but it is intimidating um, in this light. I got one in the daytime as well. because the, sh- uh, the photo I showed Felicia's at night. And you can probably find this on Instagram if you'd like the visuals. Um, this one is during the day and you can see how wide it is. So this thing c- could probably be like wow. a stadium's worth of people. What is okay <laughs> on the second on the second photo? The the top looks like a clarinet <laughs> coming off. Of it. Oh my god, it does! <laughs> <laughs> like if you told me this was like a music themed restaurant in the second photo because it's uh-huh. all blurry, I would genuinely believe you. Oh my gosh. The gears on the front, by the way, do that's move. not a diss. It looks great. It looks um, great. The, oh gears God, move. the gears move. This looks incredible. I have no critiques. There's spiral hedges on the front. God, I love a spiral. Yeah, hedge. they went for it. There's lamp posts lining up to it. Um, like this it's, looks great. This is Wonka esque. This deserves the Wonka esque title. The font, gorgeous. It's just so fun. Looking into it, we're gonna keep going with the lore a little bit and talking more about how like it relates to actually going there so if you and i went there for dinner well what happened is the actors for penelope and jacques would be following like they would go okay, around table to table robot is jacques oh because that's... i'm about to drop okay. the photo for you right, right so jacques like it's a pretty good costume they've created he has little metal parts um i'd say he almost looks like a little pixar oh. robot if they did it um, so Penelope is seen wearing a fun hat that has a peacock feather in it. It's she's a little wearing, Ren Faire. She is serving mom from Treasure Planet. Yes. Um, but more on like, you know, active pirate side. And then Jacques has a good little bowler hat, big eyes. Uh, his robot stuff is more of the dwarven metal. If you play Skyrim, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, he's got a nice apron and a good tie, a cravat. Oh, I love a cravat. We love a cravat. So they walk around and they'll just interact with you. So you can have conversations with them. They're not necessarily just like, and now it's time for our three o'clock show. Like they, they chat with you. You can be like, what should I get on the menu and all this stuff? And they'll like giggle up with you. So, um, I, uh, have a little video. You yeah, can it watch. does look like the the people holding menus in this photo are holding full novels. Yes, so they're huge. Um, and you don't need to watch this whole thing, and you don't really need to have the sound on if you don't want. But I feel like it at least gives you a sense yeah. of the giddy uh glee that these actors have, and it's the kind of uh interaction I feel like I would be okay with because sometimes I'm like I feel awkward. Please don't talk to me. This the the inside of this this image that I'm looking at. I just want to say real quick. I don't know if this was just a thing during my childhood. That there were these weird places you could go to that would be these like three story play structures. They were always in these weird places and weird towns. And they would have these like air cannons that you could shoot balls out of at other people. And oh. this, the interior of this looks like the most high class version of that. Oh. Okay. Like with the webbing on the side and the poles going up, and there seems to be something going on in the middle. It just reminds me of that vibe. Yes. I remember I went to one and they let me eat some normal. Um, <laughs> normal? <laughs> I'm curious yeah, where I this got is to going. Eat these, what the fuck are they called? They're like little things like that. And they Cow-tails? got like. No, they're a vegetable. They're like green. Green beans? Sweet no, beans? they're like so tiny and they're really hard to find. At a mom. Oh. They're like uh, roots or something, but they're not. Oh, okay. Sprouts. A mystery vegetable. Bean sprouts. Sprout. Sprouts. I had bean sprouts and it changed my life as a seven-year-old. Wow. And that's it. <laughs> not worth it. They really are not worth it. And also when Felicia says they look like books, she's not joking. I'm looking at this. There is a spine on this menu. There is a spine on this menu. Do you see that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a full spine. It's literally a book. I hadn't noticed that until now. Oh my gosh. So Felicia, yeah, if you just want to click on it, again, you don't have to like listen to it, but um, you'll just kind of get, you'll see like how they interact with it. Penelope is making me feel things. It's showing um, Jacques basically wanting to take someone's glass of water and Penelope's going, why? And he goes, I want to drink it. And then she goes, you can't, you don't have a functioning mouth. 
And then he gets a little sad and he goes, oh, that's a great question. Um, So he's a little goofball. And this is from Ordinary Adventures. I went to a different part in the video and the guy just went, this is where you go for salads and soups. (laughs) If you skip to 335, you can kind of watch the interaction they get to have with Penelope and um, Jacques. Uh, Penelope says, oh, what's that? What's that friend you're holding? And the guy goes, it's a camera. And she goes, camera. That's so funny. Camera. It looks like uh, he has one eye. So like she's treating it like a robot. Um, And then Jacques comes over and gets so excited to meet uh, camera, the robot. And then he goes, oh, well, uh, uh, I can stand still, too, because Penelope Penelope goes, camera is like the most uh, exquisite robot who can stand still. And Jacques is like, I could do it, too. And then just stand still for a very long time. (laughs) And (laughs) like, it's so cute. The waiters as well, um, along with uh, Penelope and Jacques, everyone's dressed in steampunk. So they really want to bring home the atmosphere. If we... (laughs) Uh, let me know when you've had your fill of the video. The milkshake looks fucking crazy. Oh, just you it's wait. got a full slice of cake in it. Anyway, um, and guys, I have links to all the walkthroughs I watched of this. So this was ordinary um, adventures. So yeah, let's talk about this fucking menu. This is probably going to take us an hour. Um, so the menu includes a lot of chocolate infused items. It's not all chocolate. Like they have a lot of regular American food. Um, so you're not going to be like only stuck with disgusting chocolate sandwiches or something when you're like, I just want meat. But there's a lot of unique chocolate items they have. Um, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of the YouTubers said the menu was overwhelming. And then from the article I referenced earlier in this episode, they described the menu as the war and peace of menus. (laughs) (laughs) So another reason why it's so big is they have so many different food items. I've only included the chocolate ones um, just to give us a taste of what this is. But each plate essentially has a photo of the food. We have the lore in there. They've added all these designs. So I, I don't know how many pages this menu is, but it's a book, you know. So let let me review some of these items. And I want, I want you to tell me if you'd want it. So a popular one is the chocolate almond bread. It looks like the bread you get from Outback, but on the inside, obviously, there's chocolate goo, and you get it with a uh, caramel butter, I believe. Um, Penelope likes to call it a sneaky dessert because you can just tell everyone you had bread and butter before your dinner, but really, you secretly had dessert before dinner, you scoundrel. But it looks fucking great. Next up is the Cocoa Pork Tenderloin, which goes for $24.95. It is a (laughs) chocolate-crusted pork tenderloin medallions, sweet potato mash, seasonal vegetables, sherry white chocolate reduction. No. No, it sounds sounds rough. I just pictured pork cut into the shape of a medallion. You get to, um, they put it on you like a lay when you order it. You get, (laughs) (laughs) it's like a candy necklace, but meat. Babe. Uh, babe, I've got something better than a candy necklace. It's my pork necklace. Grind that up and put it on your pork necklace, you giddy bitch. Man, they <laughs> really ground up that cocoa and put it on their pork That's job, That's literally. what they chose. They chose that. They chose that. I don't think I, um, the menu I think has changed a little bit since all these walkthroughs. Someone had something similar and they said it was surprisingly good. I, I feel like it, this reminds me of when I go to certain restaurants and they have like bacon jam and I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? That's disgusting. But like you eat it and it turns out to be good. So I don't know. But chocolate and pork is something I never considered. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. We got some more regular things now. We got chocolate waffle. It's $10.95. It's not just chocolate chips in a waffle, though. Okay. This ain't your average waffle house chocolate. Oh, this waffle. is the chocolate with the chocolate chips Eggo waffle supreme deluxe. Get no, get fucking stoked. Put on your seatbelt, okay? I want you to be safe as I tell you this. It's got chocolate shavings, chocolate chunks, raspberry chocolate ganache, whipped topping, micro mint powdered sugar, and crushed Oreos. Jesus. What's micro mint? And is this like, is the waffle chocolate or are these just included within the waffle? That's, I think it's included in the waffle um, because I didn't want to like grab every chocolate thing with like waffles and the French toast. There was a lot of chocolate stuff, but there is a double chocolate waffle. So I imagine this is just regular. It would have to be regular, right? If you want to enjoy any of these (laughs) extra shit, like what the fuck are my chocolate shavings and chocolate chunks and crushed Oreos? Would I order this? You bet your fucking ass I would. On popular opinion, I don't like melted chocolate in things. I only like, I like chocolate chips in things when they've been refrigerated and it's cold 
cold. Oh. But otherwise, no. Oh, I think me chocolate up, Daddy. chips in something are only good in a chocolate chip muffin and everything else is just a poor excuse for a chocolate chip muffin. Okay. That's offensive on so many layers. Um, but I don't have time to emotionally invest in this. You're stuck in this podcast with me, this. Elaine. You can't quit. I wasn't sober. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, waffles are contentious, so we're going to move on for the sake of our friendship. Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) French toast, uh, the lovers' breakfast. I don't know why I said that. That's not whatever. (laughs) Fuck it. Fuck me. Okay, so banana and Nutella French toast vegan um, goes for twelve ninety five. It's got this is embarrassing. I know I know this word, and I know I probably know how to pronounce it, but I've never visually and you know combined it with the visuals. It's going to be chala. Chala, Kala, Kala. He said it. Like, I keep talking when you say it. It's like Hala, Hala. Okay, it's got what is Hala? It's like a Jewish bread, right? Okay, okay. It's all coming back. Okay, <laughs> this so, is. I see. This is. This. I'm is, learning um, so much. <laughs> you taught me that Dashen is not a word, and that it's actually Dachshund. Yes, <laughs> and I taught you what Hala is. <laughs> This is a day of learning on the podcast. It's a day of learning, guys. Elaine learned what a dirigible was. Elaine learned. I learned a dirigible. I confirmed that I did know what a Victrola is. I'm learning. It's fu- I like how it's like Kala. you almost knew I would know the answer. So you I just didn't even assumed. bother looking it up. I mean, you know, it's just, it's easier than Googling sometimes. Because every time I go to my keyboard, I feel like I drop 10 things. And we drop too many. Felicia already dropped her microphone during this, like, session we Why had. go to Google when I can go to my weird Doogie Hauser friend, Felicia, <laughs> who knows every weird fact, apparently. Felicia, do my taxes. <laughs> Felicia, do my open heart surgery. Felicia, can you figure out my 401k? Literally, I started a new job. And guys, I if, you, if you've not yet entered W2 land or all that fun shit with 401ks and Roth IRAs, cry now, weep. Um, anyway, that was an uplifting thing. Roth IRA is my favorite NPR host. Oh. Keep it going. Hi, my name's Roth IRA, and we're going to talk about <laughs> saving for your future. So banana and Nutella French toast. It's got challah, banana mascarpone. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep moving. Banana mus- mar- mascarpone filling, Nutella <laughs> copyright, brulee banana, and Leonese potatoes. I don't know what the fuck Leonese potatoes are. Why the fuck they're on a banana <laughs> Nutella? Yeah. But whatever. It sounds good. Twelve ninety five. Maybe it's a side. Um, obviously, again, you guys can check out the menu. There's so many other like sweet things, but that just, you know, a bitch loves Nutella. I had to. Now on to one of my favorite sections, the drinks for alcohol. BPs. So I got like 10 listed here. Here we go. The vanilla chocolate cocktail uh, retails for $14.50. It's got Madagascar vanilla vodka, Trader Vic's dark chocolate, Ferretti chocolate, and chocolate bitters. And it sounds fucking amazing. I'm not someone who likes fruity sweet drinks, but I would fucks with this chocolate moment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. These drinks I are know, about to make I you would cry. I go <laughs> crazy for the chocolate and coffee kind of. Oh, God, chocolate coffee. When your day shit. comes, kid, an espresso martini is gonna be your best friend. <laughs> I know, I know, it's gonna be my. It's friend. gonna fuck it's you gonna up. Be, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be dangerous. I really want to be there. <laughs> I, it sucks because I can't have them anymore because I cut out caffeine in my life. But I fucking love an espresso martini. This is also now part therapy along with learning sessions. So yeah, yeah. Also, these cocktails are gonna be really expensive. Weep for yourself. Um, so yeah, imagine you got a twenty twenty three dollar chocolate pork chop, and then you're gonna get a drink, and this isn't even counting dessert, which you kind of have to get dessert when you go to this place, you know. So you're probably spending yeah. at least fifty to sixty dollars per person without tax and without tips. So uh, fucking squat and shit Oof. out your gold bars, guys. Up next is the old chocolate fashion. This retails for fourteen fifty. It's bird dog chocolate whiskey. Ooh, cherry hearing hearing sure cherry hearing liqueur sugar chocolate and orange bitters now ya bitch loves an old fashioned and this sounds good and all ears.net tried this and she said it's super good and the bartender actually makes it at home because he loves it so much so hey i basically need to go get drunk at the chocolate emporium well they gave you the recipe they gave me the recipe i can just make it uh, no i can, i shouldn't have that on hand that'll be dangerous 
Okay, up next on our drinking palooza, we have the chocolate cherry mule for thirteen fifty. It's double Actually, chocolate. Actually, no, I hate cherry. Why did I say that? I hate I'm that. not a huge fan of cherry either. This is double chocolate vodka, brandied cherry, ginger beer, and chocolate bitters. How can you have more than two chocolate vodka? Or <sighs> how, can, how can you have more than one chocolate vodka? Do you just put it in twice? The conspiracy, <laughs> you know, I have, this is a thought I don't often open up because it fucks me up um but the i the concept of double chocolate i feel like is just a fucking ploy i think it's well, just it's like they're extra saying it's, sweet. it's dark chocolate and smoke chocolate this is chocolate shut the fuck that's up. just chocolate you know it's not like cheese there's not different species no you know like i'm sorry wonka there isn't there isn't now you're gonna love all these oh my god the next like three drinks have things i don't know how to pronounce okay um up next is one i know you would love it's a chocolate coffee banana uh 1450 it's mm. got um the banana gives me pause it, oh it does as it does in many aspects it's of interesting my life. though because chocolate banana is a classic thing sold so to have it in a drink could it be could it work and it's, the coffee just feels unnecessary. But, you know, continue. You know, whatever. Uh, a Carib Club banana rum. I don't know how to I say any of this. I thought that was like a McRib. And I was so a confused. McRib banana rum. I'm not going to know any of these brands, y'all. Um, I drink beer. Uh, Carib Club banana rum, Galliano Ristretto liqueur, Ferretti chocolate, soy milk, and chocolate bitters. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. See, if they didn't have the cherry, I'd be so into this. Macadamia chocolate cherry. $14.50. Double chocolate vodka, Drambuy 15, and macadamia nut liqueur, which I did not know that was a fucking thing. Macadamia nut liqueur. So I might get some of that. And then my last one I've included, I wanted to throw in a beer because uh, they do have beers here and they have two chocolate stout. That's T O O. It's too much chocolate stout, which retails for $10.50. It is a dark ebony with rich chocolate finish with 5.8% alcohol volume, which delicious. I, I love a good stout. If you want mm-hmm. to chew your beer, get yourself a stout. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a delightful experience. So those are all our alcoholic drinks. Yeah. Yeah. To some, if you want to send me out there, I will happily try every single one of your drinks and rank them um, and then throw up in your front yard. Up next, Felicia. Oh, girl. I'm going to take you to the milkshakes. This is where things get crazy. Okay. Uh, so there's the link. Have fun. Have fun. Um, I am not going to list all the flavors because there's too many. Yeah. Do you want me to just say ones that, that yes. stand out? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. I'm reading the title Thrilla in Vanilla. Mm. It's just vanilla ice cream, vanilla pastry cream, vanilla wafers, vanilla macaron, vanilla marchino cherry, and a whip topping. Uh, now, Heavenly Hazelnut, I would lose my mind over. Mm-hmm. Nutella ice cream. Oh, my God. Hazelnuts. Yes. Nutella. Because yes. the ice cream wasn't enough. Cocoa powder and whipped topping. Perfect. No notes. You're probably also wondering, Felicia, because that's a lot of things to fucking say for yeah. a milkshake. How do they all fit it in? Here's a fucking photo. Yeah. The confetti one on the far right has a fucking giant piece of cake on top. Yeah, there is a full piece of cake in one of these. Yeah, I think I see the Nutella one and it looks fucking it looks crazy. so good um, is that these just are, pure is that like half a jar of fucking nutella on essentially top? guys these are giant mason jars and then there's like another foot of food and whipped cream oh, on top oh, of them oh, oh guys don't straws. don't worry don't worry we have chocolate times five chocolate ice cream chocolate chunk strawberries chocolate sauce whipped topping chocolate spirals one two three four <laughs> five <laughs> no 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 no. there's only four items that say chocolate oh my goodness and that description. Um, so in one of the little bits they someone is asking oh what dessert should i get and penelope and jock are like they'll totally help and then penelope is like oh you know what jock's favorite milkshake is it's the chocolate times five or as he likes to call it and then jock the robot goes chocolate 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 nice. chocolate and i got i laughed they got a giggle got a out giggle. of me. And then there's there's the one I would order. Wait, they got the coffee coffee ice cream, the espresso buzz. Ooh. Espresso, chocolate espresso beams, whip topping, maraschino cherries. There is also the title of That's a Mint. <laughs> Minty chocolate chip ice cream, Andy's Mint's Mint chocolate chips, ice Ooh. cream sandwich. Damn. And those are all Jacques' specialties, so don't worry. Oh, and then don't worry, the page keeps going. And they're all like $16. 
also. So yeah, again, they're imagine around 14, 14, 14 to 16 dollars. I can't imagine having one of these after a fucking dinner. Like I can't yeah. fathom. Oh, don't worry. Oh, that actually sounds really good. They have a triple chocolate bread pudding. Oh, yeah. Three types of chocolate, chocolate cake and white chocolate ice cream, chocolate cream pie, chocolate creme brulee, French chocolate mousse. I love a chocolate mousse. Fun life hack, everybody. If you're craving chocolate mousse but are too lazy to go get chocolate mousse, uh, go get some whipped cream, spray it really hard in a cup, and then throw some cocoa powder in there. It's the same thing. Oh, fuck Not yeah. really. But if you haven't had chocolate mousse in a while, it's basically the same. So I actually have a photo from Kira. Kira sent us a couple photos and oh. um, they tried the chocolate mousse. So uh, this is from the website, but it's on the far left. Kira describes it. Um, it comes in a little tub and it's like having a big bowl of chocolate and it looks so good. It does look real good. God, I would have such bad heartburn after this, but mm. I have heartburn looking at this <laughs> so much. <laughs> I like that they plate the creme brulee with like a like snorting portion of vanilla ice cream next to it. <laughs> it's the, it it's the like snuffing powder it. of the dessert world section, it essentially. It really looks like it. I'm surprised they don't just give you a fucking trough for these meals. Like, yeah. it's so much, but it looks so Every time good. I see creme brulee, I will never stop thinking about the one time I was in class and the guy behind me genuinely complained about the fact that the dorm took away his creme brulee torch. I think about it all the fucking time. <laughs> And it was the most pretentious guy you've ever met, where it was like, of course you have a creme brulee torch. That's, it's, and like, thank God they took it away from him. We don't need that in a dorm. I never talked to him, but the amount of restraint I had to say was to turn around and go, you can't be mad about that. (laughs) Like, you can't. There was this. You straight up can't. You're in a Shakespeare program. I know you (laughs) think you're allowed to have a creme brulee torch just because of your whole business, but you're, you can't. You can't just do anything. Anyway. Oh, my God. I asked Kira if they had anything they wanted to like, share more about the experience. And so um, a little bit more about the food. Uh, quote, okay. I love how their powder and liquid candy, the first photo, which I'll share in a second, are packaged in these cool potion-like bottles. This is in the confectionery, Ooh. by the way. So, again, you have the restaurant and then you have the confectionery slash gift shop. That's right. There's a fucking gift shop, bitch. Oh. You ain't going to have no money after this. I hope you have a good credit score. And if not, this is going to bump you up. I'm so fucking excited. I have to go here and lose all my money. Yeah. She lost it all the toothsome. <laughs> I'm in Zeta's prison. Tucson? No, toothsome. I had dreams to go to Tucson, but I ended up in toothsome. And now I'm a gumless giddy bitch. One misspoken, misheard thing on the call with Delta Airlines, and here I am in debt to Penelope Professor Professor Dr. Bitch. Thibault Titty, uh, oui, oui, bonjour, Jacques. Jacques got, his, got me on his hit list, and I, he's trained my scent. I don't know who this character is. <laughs> I ordered a milkshake, but now I'm just dairy shook. <laughs> Let it sink I in. ordered a milkshake, but I'm the one that got shook. There was the ganache. And then it was the mirror glaze, and I looked at myself and I saw, damn, what have you done to yourself? I ordered the creme brulee, but then Jacques came out with the flamethrower and brewed me. <laughs> <laughs> Jacques can brew me any day. So, oh my god. This is so weird. Kira wrote all this in the email. That's so weird, Kira. You're so <laughs> weird. <laughs> Mm, okay. Kira, I didn't know. Kira, that's so crazy. That's, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Oh my gosh, that's like... I'm so sorry. Um, (laughs) Anyway, okay, back to what Kira was saying. One thing I would recommend from the restaurant is the gnocchi. Uh, It's a pasta dish, but the tomato sauce looks like chocolate. And it's gnocchi. It's gnocchi. Gnocchi? Yeah. (laughs) Um, I went to Italy. I think I know a thing or two. (laughs) I've eaten Chef Boyardee. Suck my dick. Okay. (laughs) One thing I recommend from the restaurant is the gnocchi. Uh, It's a pasta dish, but the tomato sauce looks like chocolate. And it had a perfect sweet taste flavor to it. Um, and then wow. the chocolate mousse. So um, I'm going to pop into the confectionery so you can truly appreciate the candy floss Kira was talking about. Um, so it's it's like everything you could imagine. There's truffles. There's macrons. I'm popping a picture of all the truffles. They have fun colors. Wow. This is so Wonka. 
Um, like the yeah, it, they there's look like like. Like there's like dinosaur eggs over there, right? You know? Yeah, like, this looks like something you they look like a Tide Pod. So people are gonna love that. Oh, we love it. And so I'm just gonna try to quickly go through the confectionery and the gift shop. I'm just merging as one entity at this point. So they have truffles and then they have their own candy. There is a weird theme with an octopus. The octopus is not explained, but it's on a okay. lot of things. I do not know. Okay. Okay. I'm popping the so one of the candies all is that, all that that long of a menu didn't mention the octopus didn't mention the octopus unless it's a you know it's a secret and we have to read the menu or so I wonder if we could order the menu things I don't need um so toothsome tinkers is kind of the name of the brand so we have octopus treats which just kind of look like what do you call them it's like the runts but circular <laughs> circular um yeah. anyway the octopus is steampunk because it has a monocle um they have these things called indulgence desserts which are just really cool crafted chocolate things so like some of them look like cauldrons and they have some that are like wrapped up like basically fancy shaped chocolate they have like chocolate keys and hearts they have their own blend of coffee and then we come to the candy floss and this is the photo kira took for us um, it looks like it's coming out of its own little like factory shoot. So vibrant colors. Um, it enters into Ooh, like what looks like a gumball oh my God, machine. That looks so cool. It looks so fucking cool. And this is like coming from the ceiling. So it's fucking tall. It's like a central pillar. Um, bright colors, blue, purple, red. Um, I'm going to list some of the flavors of this cotton candy to you right now. Uh, banana split, birthday cake, root beer. <laughs> Sour watermelon. Let me try that again. What happened? <laughs> Sour watermelon. See, see, you make fun of me for getting into weird voices, but now you try talking the whole goddamn episode. <laughs> you see what happens. Oh, Ruth. Sour Ruth. watermelon. Sour watermelon. It's hard, especially after we do like, like when we do a 10 minute bit, like I still feel it, even though I'm not doing as much talking, we do a 10 minute bit with a voice and then trying to go back into normal talking is impossible. It yep. is impossible Welcome to my life is that a <laughs> is that a seahorse motorcycle in the back i'm seeing on a oh my god it is. Frame? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that oh my god yeah that's that's exactly what it is um so uh, sorry there's still more flavors so root beer sour watermelon and then pb and j and that's just a handful because below Whoa. this it's like they're all in um, plastic containers and there's just a ton <laughs> whoa and they're in uh, very <laughs> vibrant colors they look fun but it's it's a lot. Um, and again, it's just that, so easy to blow Are those dispensers out functional? I assume not. I don't think so. But in um, my dreams, I imagine they that's are. probably just like cotton in there. But yeah, my I dreams know. it would be too. I'm not sure how gumball machine would work with cotton candy. Yeah, the you logistics know? are fucking with me. Like a little kid would go in there with its sticky jam hands, and then it would just be like a sugary nightmare. And then yes, and then there's apparel. So you have your classic T-shirts, I heart chocolate. And then you can buy steampunk <laughs> steampunk accessories and outfits. Um, so you have oh, your God yeah, lose the so goggles, hats. There's these shin boots with gears and stuff. And there's an entire outfit on a mannequin that says it's available for purchase. Just talk to an employee and they will assist oh. you. Um, which why the fuck? I bet it would be like $1,000. And why the fuck you would buy it there and not elsewhere? I don't know. You're caught up in the magic. You're on a sugar high. You're drunk off of all your fucking banana split martinis and you're like this is what i need i need the entire outfit <laughs> but are we done fuck no we aren't steampunk art and trinkets so there's paperweights and figurines um one of them is like this cool skull and um like they look really cool like there's so much inv like you would think you just went to a museum um which i guess in a way yeah. you kind of did so there's that That's fun um, yeah and then uh this so this is a special thing this was included, uh, and I, I apologize, I don't remember where it came from. I think it was like a really old blog. And they went to the Etsy shop, Kelly Boo Designs, K-E-L-I-B-U Design. Um, and Kelly Boo makes steampunk custom dolls. And so I came across Penelope and Jacques, the steampunk dolls. And it's basically an American Girl doll that is steampunk. I'm dropping it in the oh drop zone. Oh, my God. Now, it is so cool and intricate. She and looks incredible. It's, she did it's great. Um, and I can tell you, that's a Felicity base. That's a... <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, these are really cool. I personally am terrified of dolls. So this is a little bit of a nightmare for me. Um, and I was yeah. scared, but like the recreation of the outfit and like Jacques looks the so perfect. Like it's, it's she's great. not fucking around. She's not fucking around. So uh, kudos to Calibu design. I'm just terrified of this. Um, and it brings me terror, but like They're it's not well scary. Done. Elaine's just a little bitch. They're incredible. Literally crawl in a hole, shit in it and bury yourself. I'm so sorry. I don't want you to do that. If so you're happy. saying if you were sitting in a room and I pulled out Kit the American Girl doll, the girls who survived the Great Depression, you'd you'd jump out of your seat. Okay, Kit is fine. I also like the German one. There's no German one. There are American there Girl one. dolls. No, but there's a German one. German heritage. <laughs> no, I know. I know the one you're talking about. You know the one I'm talking name. about. Yeah. yeah. The, why, why are you fucking with me? I just <laughs> learned what a, I just learned what a dirigible is. And you're going to come over here and question my American girl doll knowledge. I'm sorry that oh, I grew up with a bunch. I'm sorry. I grew up in a historical family where we played civil war. And my brothers always made me the Confederates because they lost. Do you know what kind of trauma that causes a child? This is about me. Um. So moving on from the dolls, that's just like a little snippet of all the gift shops. So that's just kind of a snippet of my trauma. <laughs> just a little snippet. So um, that kind of wraps up the experience. Uh, and I, I, I want to go. I mean, you've convinced me. I want to go. I love, you know, I love lore. I love lore. I love a backstory. I love a, a theme. I love that they, everything is quirky and everything is expensive, but I feel like you probably to an extent, get what you pay for. Yeah, I feel like they're making it worth your mo- while. Yeah, I would probably recommend based on the YouTubers I watched and their experience. The main dishes are okay. Definitely sticking with the desserts is probably your best option. So if you want to save money, go to dinner so you can see Jacques and Penelope, but maybe just get yourself a milkshake, the appetizer, and maybe like a martini. Also, so you like don't die. Because like this could kill you, I feel like. This is (laughs) so much fucking This seems like a health hazard. Yeah. But to save money, honestly, and like maybe get some goodies to go. Um, But the gift shop, the gift shop looks gorgeous. I mean, and this again, this place is huge. Like the gift shop could probably be its own fucking target. <laughs> so I want to go. It looks I want to so cool. go so badly. Ugh. So that that is the experience of toothsome chocolate emporium savory kitchen fuckery. Wee 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 woo woo. Incredible. Ten out of ten stars. Ten stars. Again. My God, you gave him a galaxy. So after all of that and the experience of chocolate on chocolate and chocolate, you've seen all the different things they've done with the candies and everything. Um, what possible predictions do you have? I'm going to say within the Wonka movie, we will watch some gears turn. Oh, nice. I feel like that's very reasonable. It actually is. I like that. No Rube Goldberg machines. No pigeons with a personality moment. (laughs) Just taking it back to very, very broad. A gear will turn. Now, you know what's going to happen. They're just going to show a gear, but it ain't moving. <laughs> like, bitch. You're, we're going to be so, we're going to be screaming at this premiere. No, be, gears fuck. will be shown. I'm not even going to say that. Gears will be shown. Oh, we okay. Will see I like it. A gear. <laughs> Richard Gear show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm gonna fucking throw out there that a fucking dirigible is gonna be part of this goddamn movie. A fucking dirigible, not a blimp, a dirigible. <laughs> and yes, I am saying dirigible because I don't fucking know how to pronounce it. And if I just blur it together, we can just pretend it's that, one of that's those words is. that sounds better if you say it with a British accent. You say it American dirigible. Ew, dirigible. Oh, who's this on the floor? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to France in my dirigible. Oh, that's good. Sexy. Hello, my name is Augustus Gloop. This is my dirigible. Yeah, even that sounds better. Dirigible. Dirigible. Even better. Well, everybody, now that you learned your word of the day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wonka Watch word of the week is dirigible. Oh, man. This well, was an episode of learning for both of us. Yeah, like, was it about the Chocolate Emporium or was it about expanding our knowledge and accepting that there's things we can't possibly understand like of <laughs> like the word dirigible like the word dirigible or why the fuck her parents have set out to find her do we do we know what happens to them is or this why restaurant- the octopus was there why is the octopus there why aren't we talking about the depressing site that she the depressing uh, thing is that she created this entire restaurant so her parents would find her but will they at what point does she give up 
But on that note, Felicia, do you want to take us out? <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode of Wonka Watch. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at Wonka Watch and also on TikTok at Wonka Watch. Have you been to Universal Toothsome or have any other Wonka related news, stories, tales, or concerns you'd like to tell us about? Send us an email down at old Wonka Rapture at gmail.com. If you want to support us, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash Wonka Watch. And if you support us there, we'll sing you a little song. <laughs> and it's been different genres each time. Different so. genres each time. We bring a new flavor every time. You never know what you're going to get. Um, and if you donate to us and you want us to read our, your message on the podcast, we have veto rights. But, like, let us know. Let us we know. will. We will. Unless it's gross. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> we do have standards. <laughs> we do have, believe it or not, we do have standards. Mm. Um <laughs> I guess that's it. Am I done? Did I do it? Yeah, everything? you basically did it. You're good. Um, All right. Well, this has been Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Roth IRA from NPR. And I am just letting you everybody know at the end of the show uh, that at the end of the day, it's not that important. It's not that important. Rainforest Cafe is important. But this whole episode is not that important. Yeah. No, Rainforest Cafe isn't important. I don't care about Rainforest Cafe. No, you do. You, do. you lit up. I don't anymore. Olive I'm Garden. an adult. Olive Garden is important. Uh, but again, I don't really like Olive Garden. There's always a fly in there. Have you ever been to Olive Garden that there hasn't been a fly in? Felicia, you I don't want to call have. you out right now, but you at the beginning of this episode was fucking one level 100 on Rainforest I agree Cafe with and my Olive past Garden. Self, but also at the same time. <laughs> An hour later, you're much older and wiser. They're and not that important. <laughs> I don't think they're that important. I can't Your say they're important. Your opinions aren't that important. I Yeah. <clears throat> Daniel Radcliffe is important. Oh, <laughs> Jeff but Patel this is important. Is but this not episode, important. not important. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.